So Nassim is filing for uh, I-75 on removal conditions. As we talked about, that's when your green card is issued within two years of your marriage. And to keep the green card to make it a permanent 10-year green card, you have to file another form of I-751. So I want to give you advice. The three main documents that you need to have a lot more of this if possible, but the three ones USCIS loves to have is very important. One, driver's licenses with the same address on it. So if you're a husband and wife or, or same sex couple, whatever it is, a spouse, a couple, um, you if you have your driver's license with the same address, you submit that as proof of joint address, that's very important. Along with that, a lease agreement or lease agreements or ownership property together. But the driver's license is something they like to see that has the same address or maybe IDs if you don't drive. Number two, tax returns for the last two years. So um, from the time you got married, when you could start filing married filing jointly tax returns, um, that you filed it. And filing as married filing jointly, not married filing separately. That's better for it to be jointly filed tax returns. But two is tax returns. And three, joint bank accounts is very important. And bank accounts that you use, not that just that you opened up and sat there. Money goes in, money comes out. And they want to see the last two years worth. So from the time you got the green card to the time of submitting, nine, you know, between 20, 21 to 24 bank statements, literally. So you go back and you go to your bank account and you print out 24 months or not 21 months, whenever the time is that you're filing, worth of bank statements. And that comes a lot of paper. If you have a credit card account together too, that's another set of 21 or 24 months of, of statements as you're gonna be printing. But those are the three with you know extra stuff right there. The driver's license showing same address and hopefully you know a lease agreement or a property ownership together. Secondly, a dry, uh, what is it called? Um, bank statements and credit cards, I'm switching it up. Bank statements and credit cards for the last 24 months. And third, tax returns. They're really, those three, if they don't see it, they don't like it. Um, usually clients have two out of three at least, but really do that. The main problem that I've seen when people file on their own is that it's sloppy. You want to make it very easy for USCIS to flip through it, find everything that they need, and feel confident that they, this case is okay and doesn't need more review. What I've seen is, uh, like every case I've ever done myself, I sell five one. You know, knock on wood, that hopefully it doesn't change in the future. I've never had an interview for my cases. But the only times I've been to interview are for people who have hired me just to come for the interview. And I rarely do that, especially when I feel bad for the couple, usually a young couple or something like that, because they've already messed it up. And every time I go there and do that, the main reason I see they call for an interview is they just got a bunch of paper shoved it in there, no organization, no cover letter, and the officer can't figure out what's going on here. And so they just say, okay, come in person and let's figure out what's going on this. And it's not a pleasant experience to have an I-751 interview. Many times they separate you in different rooms and talk with you. So it's really important to just be very organized and make it easy for the other officer to believe and know that your relationship is real. And that's really the number one tip I would have to give along with you know having a ton of documentation. Is it still a requirement for two affidavits of support? from friends and family members for marriage I-751. There's no requirement, this goes back to the removal of conditions I was talking about earlier for people that have newer marriages and newer green cards. There's no requirement that you provide an affidavit, but if you are gonna provide it, first of all, it has to be a minimum of two letters, and secondly, you need to have original ink signatures on those. So those friends or family members, whoever they are that know about your relationship that could attest to it in those affidavits, I have to sign them with a pen and give you that original to mail to USCIS. In other kinds of applications, in the I-130, we send copies, but for those you need ink signature, the minimum is two if you choose to add that. And you know, a lot of cases, you know, why not add it? But not always. Um, sometimes, you know, there's so much evidence to the relationship we don't need it. Or I have another case where a couple just don't want to get other people involved in their business. So they don't want to ask for that favor, or deal with it, so we just don't submit it. It depends on how strong your case is and what kind of other kind of evidence that you do have. Because if you have so much other evidence, uh, this definitely is not gonna add anything. Uh, but you know, if you have the time, why not? Just do it properly, write it properly, all that kind of stuff. Well, what happens with removal conditions, is historically they would have you do another biometrics, but I think they got so backed up. Now what's happening now is clients submit for my 751, they get the receipt that says it's an automatic extension for 18 months. And then six or seven months later, they get another letter in the mail that says, because we already have your fingerprints, the biometrics in the system, you do not need to do another one. Now they did this on a spur all of a sudden, like a year and a half, two years ago, and I had cases that were not getting biometrics, so I kept calling them up, following up, because I thought we missed the notice, and if we miss the notice and people don't show up, they're gonna cancel the case, and the person gets sent to removal uh, hearing deportation. But as it turns out, yeah, that's what's been happening recently. Uh, all my removal condition cases get a receipt, uh, some sort of I-797 notice 
from USCIS uh, around six, seven months later that say, we don't need your biometrics, we already have it in the system. The cases I file for removal conditions never have interviews because we document it well. Um, but if they do call for an interview, it's usually because they don't trust something that's going on with your case. So it's a little bit of a harder interview where they're gonna have meet with you, the spouse, ask you a lot of questions and maybe separate you to ask questions if an interview does come up. In those kind of cases, for sure it's better. You should and I recommend having an immigration attorney that sees and knows what they're doing and who cares with you to watch out what's going on because they're not trusting an aspect of your case and so they need to overcome that doubt that the officer has uh, for them to be able to approve the 10 year green card after having a two year green card. So they're really looking at your relationship. They want to know it wasn't a lie. And so be prepared for that. It's possible to speed up an I-751 that's removal of conditions. Not really. You have to have a really good reason, uh, but it's hard to do. One thing you can do if you uh, uh, can apply for citizenship uh, based on marriage to a US citizen for the last three years and living with them, um, you, you potentially apply for citizenship and have sometimes a citizenship interview happen sooner, uh, faster, and because of that, they kind of are forced many times to do the interview and, and the process for the I-751 removal conditions faster. But as it is right now, um, where uh, you know citizenship is taking for a while too, I'm not sure how well that's gonna be able to help you uh, to speed it up, uh, but that's something I've seen to do. Unfortunately, uh, the I-751 removal conditions is a total disaster right now. It's taking forever for it to be uh, analyzed and processed, even though it's not even that big a thing. I, mean, I had a call over the weekend of a woman really worried, freaking out. She had not used an attorney and she had asked her friend, oh, I have a two year green card. I wanna get my permanent green card. What do I do? And the friend said, oh, you file form I-90. Now form I-90 is what's used if you have a 10 year green card, it expires, then you're gonna apply for a new 10 year green card. That's form I-90. You can fly, apply for it online or by paper. I usually do paper if I'm gonna do it. But when you have a two-year green card, you have to file for I-751 removal of conditions, not for my 90. And so this woman got it to now notice, was freaking out, really scared. Um, her, her green card had expired and now she gets a denial notice and she thinks she doesn't have a green card. Well, the problem is she is in a bad situation because you're supposed to file for I-751 with evidence of the relationship uh, before the expiration of the two-year green card. And in this case, she didn't do that. Green card's expired. So probably she'll need to file the I-751 now, but there is a chance that she will get a notice to appear, NTA notice to appear in immigration court for removal. And she'll have to argue in front of the judge potentially to stay here if USCIS doesn't pick up her case for late filing because it's past the window of time that she had to file the I-751. Now, USCIS will probably accept it and, and let the case go on, and hopefully the court hearing won't happen, or if it does, uh, work with the court to have USCIS finish its work. If an adjustment of status marriage base passes two years while waiting for the interview, would you still get a conditional green card? So I did a video on this, you can check it out on YouTube, but essentially, uh, if at the time that your green card is approved, or at the time of admission, if you got your green card through consular processing, uh, that date is more than two years after your marriage, then yes, you will get a permanent green card, not a conditional green card. So it works to your benefit. I have one case, and this is the only case I've ever had that's been like this, but um, the paperwork just take, for some reason take it forever, and we're about to hit the two year mark on it. Usually my cases are done in less than a year, or most of the year. And so it's taking two years, I just don't know what happened with that case. Uh, but uh, we're, it's good now because if it does hit the two years, which it will, they're just gonna get the full 10 year green card, not a conditional green card, which saves them the hassle of having to file form I-751 and all that kind of stuff. So Shirsh asks, uh, I-751 have extension letter for 18 months, but plan to travel abroad, but will expire on February, what should I do? So when you file for removal of conditions, you get a 10 year permanent green card, uh, the applications process is taking an extended amount of time. So when you do file it, your green card is expired by that point, you'll get a receipt notice in the mail. And that receipt notice will act as an 18 month extension on the green card. So in this case, it seems that um, that extension letter is nearing its expiration, but this person is gonna be traveling and outside the, the country at that time. So it creates an issue, like what are you gonna do, you know? Well, uh, under normal circumstances, you could go and, and, and you can still do this now, contact USCIS, call the 1-800 number, let them know you need an extension stamp in your passport, an extension of your green card, because you're not gonna be here while uh, after you know the expiration of the 
uh, of the receipt notice that gives the extension. So contact them so you get an extension to cover you for that time. It really depends on timelines. But I would not recommend, unless you have a really strong case or did it well, I would not recommend being outside the country when your case is having uh, being close to getting a decision. Because if it's denied, it's going to be a heck of a problem being get, getting back and fixing it. Uh, so unless it's a real urgent reason, just stay in the United States. My tenure is not approvable, approved yet. I'm still waiting for my interview. So can I apply for citizenship? So you have the I-751 pending, uh, and, and that sometimes takes, uh, I, I, most recently I got one approved in like, in like seven and a half months. But at, on average, it's a year for me. For other people, and according to USCI, it's more like a year and a half to two years. Uh, but that, that takes a long time. In the meantime, if you've been living and married to a U.S. citizen during that two, in a two year, two year, and nine month period, three year period, um, and even if the I-751 is pending, uh, you can still file for U.S. citizenship once you satisfy the time requirements. That's the exception version, being a spouse of a U.S. citizen and living with that U.S. citizen at the three year mark. You could file for U.S. citizen while the I-751 case is still pending. So we have a removal of conditions from I-751 case pending. The three years is coming up. You could file for a naturalization for N-400. If your case is good, if you don't have problems with the N-400, you could submit that and have both cases pending at the same time. And so that does come up because the I-751s are taking so long nowadays that these things do take that long. And so that's something that I recommend doing if your case is appropriate. I don't know your specific case, so I can't advise you to do that. Maybe contact my office. My email is info at jqklaw.com and we can schedule a paid consultation to review what's going on or, review, or contact another attorney. But just important, review to make sure there's no issues there. And then you can file for citizenship. Now, one problem that happens is sometimes the removal of conditions takes so much longer that your citizenship application will get an interview and they'll call you in. The thing is, they can't approve a citizenship case until the I-751 is approved. In those cases, I go with my client and I say, listen, USCIS, please, um, please do the interview for the I-751 right now. Let's get it out of the way. And once that's approved, walk us over to the citizenship room and do that interview too and get both the I-751 approved today and get the citizenship case approved today. Let's get it out there. Now, if you go by yourself, sometimes you're always shy. It's kind of intimidating to push that. But if you are going alone and your I-751 is still pending, but you have a citizenship interview coming up, um, go there and let them know, hey, I ha my I-751 was not approved yet. Please, I want to talk to a manager. I want to get this uh, both done today. Do you have the file currently at the local field office, which they probably would? Okay, let's get an officer. Let's do the interview. Let's get it out. Divorce during conditional green card. Will it be a problem if I file I-751 exception 90 days before? Okay, that's a very interesting question. It's a very complex issue. Um, and definitely I recommend first of all having a lawyer, uh, getting divorced when you have a removal of condition case pending or, or just general, you need a waiver of that is a complex problem and always leads to issues. So I really do recommend having a lawyer. Uh, but, uh, the general requirement is if you get married within, uh, and, and get the green card within two years of the marriage, you get a conditional green card, two year green card at around the two year mark of having that green card. You have to file another application form I-751 removal of conditions where you and your spouse sign it, send it in with evidence and documents that you're in a real relationship. Well, sometimes the relationship doesn't work out. So in those kind of cases, you can request a waiver. When you are doing a waiver-based I-751, you don't have to follow that 90-day window of timing of when you can file that. You can file it before or after. One of the main things though is that you have a divorce certificate or have be close to getting that divorce certificate because they cannot approve that case unless your divorce is finalized. So that's one issue that pops up. And also if your marriage didn't work out so soon, you have less documentation and evidence of your relationship. So you really need to dig down and gather a lot of proof that the marriage is real and maybe have affidavits and personal statements and letters from other people, a lot of additional work for the officer to be able to believe uh, that your relationship is real. And you may as well, you may have an interview that you have to do. So in person for them to talk with you, not always, but most of the time. So there's a lot of preparation that needs to happen if you're going to do a waiver of the I-751 requirement. So be prepared for that. It's not a, uh, it's not a walk in the park. Hey, John, I have my two year green card, but I got to work in a different state. Will that affect my 10 years? It's better to work with an attorney in that case, but you really got to document the time you were together and the relationship is real and have an explanation of why the separation happened. For example, I just had a case approved last week where um, they were living together and they both got accepted to two top business schools, the number one and two business schools. Uh, the wife went one business school and the other. And so we submit and say, listen, they're not living together right now. Uh, as soon as after they got the green card, actually. 
but you know, one's going to number one school in the country, one's going to number two school. How are you going to give up the opportunity? And they have plane tickets back and forth constantly. You show, hey, we're going to visit each other. They went on vacations together. So it's really about documenting the relationship and having an explanation. We didn't even have an interview. Now it took like, I don't know, a year and like a year and a half to get that approved, 18 months. It was really annoying that it took that long. Uh, but it's possible, Richmond, but you know, you just got to document it well and have good explanation. I hope you enjoyed this educational video. We have a second channel with much more information as well at JQK Immigration Clips. Please check that out. Also, you'll find our social media site has a lot more videos, images, and information about the U.S. immigration process. Please check those out on the various social media websites.